Rhea Snaketail is dead. Although the circumstances surrounding her death are still something of a mystery, no one can deny the fact that her life has ended, least of all Rhea herself. Some might think this means Rhea is now at peace, but she has actually been particularly busy since her pulse stopped. Immediately after her passing, Rhea was given judgment by Death himself, finding that her soul was not virtuous enough for heaven, yet not sinister enough for hell. Death sent our heroine to the Ring of the Slightly Damned, a stretch of land on the outskirts of hell reserved for souls like Rhea's. When she entered the ring, Rhea was introduced to a wide variety of interesting characters. Buaro, the fire demon with the brain of a thumbtack who was assigned to keep an eye on her. Sakido, Buaro's black-winged wind demon sister. Iratu, Buaro's giant, drunken earth demon brother. And Seymour Sinclair, another slightly damned soul who was trying to swim his way across the river Styx. At the end of our last adventure, Death had arrived with a letter to be delivered to Sakido. Since the wind demon lived really far away, the pinnacles, Rhea and Buaro decided to wait until the next morning to deliver it to him. So until the new day comes, why don't we take a quick look into our companion's dreams? That night, this is what Rhea dreamt. Oh crap, not this all over again. I recognize this. A dream? A nightmare, I guess. This place, I hate it. Why? In a matter of moments, I die with a knife in my heart. This is my death. I remember the weapon, but not its master. They cannot be seen. The dagger is stuck. It doesn't hurt. I've been dreaming about how I died for a while now. It feels like I should be scared, but I'm not. In fact, I would call it boring. And they all end the same strange way. Off in the distance, someone looks at me and says, Rin. And this is what Buaro dreamt. I have party. I have come to your party. Yay, Sakido! Gar, Buaro is cool. Can't reach booze. Arms too small. Thaddeus is here too. Oh no, look, it's Roxella. Super Buaro to the rescue! Yay! Buaro, I can't believe you stupid party. Why it's dumb, but you are still cool, so okay. I'm Glee! Everybody, Everybody party, party, party. party! I have the bestest family ever! With that, the morning comes and they both awaken. And so begins their new adventure. Good morning, Rhea. Let's go visit Sakido now. I'm also bringing Thaddeus. <sighs> Unfortunately, Sakido lived far from Rhea and Buaro. La 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 la, we're doing something important. La la la, doo dee doo. Plus, the pinnacles were part of a small mountain range. Uh, Hurry up, Rhea. Did I ever mention I hate climbing? Because I really do. Ah, here we are, the pinnacles. But I don't really remember where my sister lives. But maybe we can try and figure it out. Come on! Much, much later. Finally! Uh, Sakido just had to live on the tallest one, didn't she? Yep! Hey, Buaro, you're a really good climber. I suck at it. Which is pretty weird, considering I'm a Jakai born and raised in a forest. Thanks! I'm used to it. But, uh, what's a forest? Hmm. Well, I guess it's just a place with a bunch of trees. But I guess you don't know what a tree is. It's uh, a big, tall thing with green things on top called leaves. <laughs> I just thought, it looks like broccoli. You can eat broccoli. Hmm. I think Sakido has one of those broccoli things. Ah, don't let go! I hate you. After several more attempts, the pair finally find Sakido's home. Though this home was not much more than a flat mountain peak, with a few carefully tended bonsai bushes scattered here and there. Hi, Sakido! 
We are here to visit you. Ugh. Finally. Hmm. I thought I heard screams. Yeah. Your beloved brother here let go while climbing. Twice! Anyway, here. We came to visit just to deliver this letter. Ugh. I'd complain that you live too far away. But if I were you, I'd live far from Buaro, too. That idiot. Oh! Buaro! Why the hell are you eating my bonsai? Huh? Not a broccoli. Well, well hey! P oh. Put me down! Ah! Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Now that our two characters are plummeting to their demise, perhaps it would be a good time to explain why Sakido's mood was so foul that day. All that is needed to explain it is a quick trip back to the previous day, just after Iratu's visit. Iratu, why did you come here today? We don't have anything you want. <laughs> this breath smells like crap. What is this the matter, sis? Can't I just visit my own family? I just wanted to say goodbye. Next time you see the big light in the sky, I'll be off to bigger and better places. This little piece of paper guarantees that. And that little paper was just the thing that put Sakido in a mood unpleasant enough to knock Rei and Buwaro off a cliff. Speaking of which... Sakido? Hold on tight. Hooray! Group hug! <laughs> After first endangering and then saving our companions' lives, Sakido carried them both back to our home and made a simple request. What? You want us to go to hell? But why? Why can't you go instead? At first, the Wind Demon's only response was to glare at Rhea with glowing azure eyes. Oh, man. Sakido looks really, really pissed off. Iratu has an important document. I want to see it. As punishment for destroying my bonsai, you two are going to go get it for me. Now go! Grab a ledge! Grab a ledge! After yet another long walk... This is all your fault. Huh? If you hadn't eaten your sister's bonsai, we wouldn't be doing this. Well, I'm sorry. I got confused and thought it was a broccoli, like you told me about. You're always confused. Thanks to that, I get screwed over. Why are you always so mean? As long as you're a dumbass, I can be as mean as I want to be. Hey, wait a minute. I think we made it to hell. Before them stood a tremendous door, positioned in the middle of an enormous stone wall. This door dwarfed our companions nearly as much as the mountains had, and on its surface was a series of sinister designs, barely illuminated by two gigantic fires, blazing at the top of the stone wall on either side of the door. The feelings of awe induced by this door can pretty accurately be summed up in one word. Whoa. What are you waiting for? Go ahead. Me? No way. You go first. You go first. No, you. 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 Ah! Before our companions, there appeared a head which, by all accounts, seemed to belong to some sort of giant, evil dog. The beast's fur was black, with sharp patches of red appearing here and there. Atop its head was a pair of dark horns that seemed to have been snapped in half, and were now odd, jagged stumps. Its mouth, which seemed large enough to swallow Buaro and Rhea whole, was full of sharp red teeth, and its eyes seemed to be constantly glowing red as well. After its initial outburst, it seemed to take in our hero's appearance for the first time, and visibly relaxed itself. Huh? It's a little purple demon in a jakai. Funny. I didn't think anyone else was left on the ring of the slightly damned. Uh, are you S Cerberus? Arr! Invaders! Kill! Destroy! Shut up, you idiot! Uh. The 
The second outburst had come from another dark head which had appeared. This head's features were highlighted in green rather than red, and its black horns were fully intact. The two-headed monster's body was also now visible, continuing the canine theme, but with mixed patches of red, green, and blue fur. Between the red and green heads, there was a nasty wound on the blue body that appeared to have been stitched together. We are indeed Cerberus. Why do you intrude here, outcasts? We, uh, we need to see, uh... Uh, Eratu. By Sindel's crown! The Earth Demon Eratu? Uh, yeah. He was drunk yesterday! Sloshed. You still want to see him? Right. This must be urgent. No one is stupid enough to bother Eratu the day after he gets drunk. Unlocking the giant door, Cerberus quickly pushed the pair through. And be back before dark. No one gets in or out at night. Ooh. I'm liking this less and less. They aren't gonna make it. The green head simply shook back and forth in reply. On the other side of the wall, Ray and Buwaro looked upon hell for the first time. To try and describe the sight here would do it a disservice. So why don't we just say this? Picture the most unpleasant place you've ever been to. Now, imagine that place jagged and twisted with horrible images almost beyond comprehension. Now, add a small lake of lava and you have a rough idea of what hell is like. Wow, this place is certainly different from our ring, huh, Buaro? And I carry Thaddeus now? Help me! The cry for help had come from an exhausted-looking human crawling out from behind a rock. You! Jakai! Help me! Oh. Scaled hand had grabbed the human by the neck and slowly dragged the poor soul back behind the rock. Ah. Rhea, I want to go home. We can't yet, you big stupid. Hey, do you hear music? Look, a demon. Yes, Maybe we can ask him where my brother is. The demon in question had black and orange fur with two horns atop his head although one had been broken in half. His orange eyes were grumpily focused on a phonograph he was sitting next to and slowly cranking. On the other side of the phonograph sat an old man with a look of pleasant contentment on his face. Um... Hi! Could you... Damn it! What the fuck do you want? Shit! First they sent me to do this lame-ass peon job just a few days before Ascension. What the fuck is up with that? I should be doing level 5 torches, not dealing with a senile bastard like this guy. Are you my grandchild? No, you shithead! I'm a demon! Demon! Eh? Speak up, shunny! And how about you two clowns? Who sent you here to fuck with me? Was it Savo? I'll bet it was. It's always the quiet ones. What did I do to deserve this sort of crap? Yes, it goes well, on yeah, I did kill that little demon in that fire-breathing lesson in Kilology class the other day. But that little prick had it coming. No one fucks with Azure Eye. I'll get them all back for this. Not sure what to make of this foul-mouthed demon, yet knowing he was their only lead so far, Ray and Buwaro told this Azure Eye about their goal. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, that's fucking hilarious. If you want to see Aratu, after he was yes, drunk off his fat ass? Why does everyone friend. keep making a big deal Some about that? I don't know. Azurai, do you think you could help us find Aratu? Of course. But I won't. Why the hell should I care? If you yes, two want something from me, do something for me first. Some but I doubt you two dipshits can figure out anything. Oh! I know. First, I know she's cute, but you can't have Thaddeus. She belongs to me. But we can play a game together. I bet you get bored and lonely by yourself. I know I was. Or we can have a party where everyone's invited. You are one retarded motherfucker, you know that? Sorry. Whatever. I'm off. Later, shitheads. Oh, no, you don't. 
Oh, you two would be so fucking dead if it weren't for the threat of doing level one tortures again. Just hear me out, okay? I want to leave ASAP. Tell us where we can find Ratu, or Buaro here will insist he be your best friend forever. Yay, a new best friend. Ugh, fine. It'll make you two psychopaths leave me alone. Aw, man. No oh, new best friend. One quick explanation later. Okay, you losers know where to go. Now get out. Bye, Mr. Ajurai. Come on, let's go. Those directions are just bullshit. There's still a chance they might find her out, too. I'm getting out of here. Say hello to your mother for me, Alvin! Rhea, do you think we'll be able to find my brother soon? I sure hope we do. Following the fire demon Azurai's directions, Buwaro and Rhea trekked through hell to find Iratu. On their way, they witnessed many horrible tortures. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, quick, look like you're beating me up. People of all races are punished for the sins they committed during their lives. More still are forced to wear really, really uncomfortable footwear. Reminds me of the time I got Thaddeus stuck up my nose. Ouch. Though eventually the screams of the damned are drowned out by an even louder noise. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Is it just me, or did Aratu get even bigger since we last met? Yeah. Uh, Alright then, where would that important paper be? Probably somewhere safe. I think I've got it. What in the name of Gaia are you doing? <laughs> what a big nose. Poke, poke. You royal idiot, get down here! Aww. Aratu's booze is very important to him. So I think that's where he keeps the note Sakido wants to get. Hmm, let's see. I wish I was as smart as you, Rhea. Ha! Hmm. I found the note! Hey, what? What the hell is this? Huh? Hmm. Is it nighttime already? Uh, oh, uh, Eratu, I can explain. <laughs> Taking the hint, Ray and Buara quickly turn around and try to put as much distance between themselves and the Earth Demon as they can. Unfortunately, Aratu immediately jumps and begins swatting at them with his now razor-sharp tail. After a few lucky dodges, our two heroes see Iratu gearing up to lunge at them. Oh man, I really hope this works. <clears throat> wow, I actually got him! <clears throat> Oh, shit. Hey, what's he doing? Come on, we gotta leave! Why are his hands closed? Before the pair is safely away, the Earth Team slams his claws into the ground, unleashing a burst of energy that charges towards our heroes and explodes, sending them flying into the air. But enough of that. So let's see what's going on back outside Hell's Gate. I know what you're thinking. But no, I'm not worried. I just... I wonder if those two will make it back before the dark. <sighs> I guess not. Aha, they did make it back. But why are they... <sighs> well, I'll just stick my head through the door and have a quick look. Oh, Nick! Sometime later, after another long climb to Sakido's place... God, this climb is such a pain in the ass. Sakido, why the hell didn't you tell us that Aratu would go crazy? I thought he'd have a hangover or- Demons don't get hangovers. Earth demons fall asleep for an entire day after they get very drunk. If woken up, they go crazy. But it's nothing compared to what demons can do while sober. I'm not sure about water demons. But it's rumored that fire demons will explode if they drink any alcohol. Wow. What about wind demons? <laughs> Just give me the letter you brought. Changing the subject. So, where is the letter? Just give me a second. <coughs> <coughs> Disgusting. Ooh, man. I better leave when she sees that. 
The scrap of paper that Sakido now looked at contained a simple drawing. On one side there stood a young demon with a vague resemblance to a certain giant earth demon. On the other side stood an angel. Above each figures were a few characters of some sort, with an arrow pointing at the figures below. The quality was something you'd expect from a child or other inexperienced artist. This is fine. Thank you. What? Huh? Really? Are you sure? Yes. Now. Please leave me alone. But... what? I said leave! Okay! Damn it. Rey and Buwaro now began their long trek back home. Well, that was a truly grand waste of time. Then again, it's not like we ever have anything important to do. I don't get it. Why was Sakido so angry? We got her the letter from Irachu like she told us to. I just wanted to make her happy. Eh, don't worry about it. I think Sakido is just one of those types who's always upset about something, no matter what you do. Anyway, Buaro, promise me that we won't do anything that insane ever again. Even if I am already dead, I don't want to know what'll happen if I get stepped on or chewed on by a Ratu or anything else. Okay. Rhea? What do you want? I'm glad that we can be friends. Yeah, 